when the posterior capsule breaks during cataract surgery, can we still place a panoptics lens? Always look in the mirror. This is a great case with several great teaching points. I broke the posterior capsule on this case involving a 58 year old patient who wanted the panoptics lens to see far and near without glasses. Whenever I have a complication, I download the video to replay it. When I replayed this video, I learned something that I did not realize until I actually watched the video. This patient's surgery has gone well up to this point. We use a Chang cannula to hydrodissect the nucleus, then begin our usual phaco emulsification with our usual second instrument phaco chopper. I create a central groove, then divide the nucleus into two halves, then rotate the hemi nucleus and perform horizontal chop. Then rotate the second hemi nucleus, then perform a second horizontal chop to split the lens into four quadrants. While actually performing the surgery, I thought the phaco needle broke the posterior capsule, but now I realized that my second horizontal chop actually created the tear in the posterior capsule. Let's rewind and let me show you how we created our own complication. Here's our first horizontal chop to bisect one hemineucleus. Then we rotate the other hemineucleus into position and place our chopper for a horizontal chop. But the problem is that I placed the chopper too far peripherally and most likely engaged the posterior capsule. My mistake. So the capsule is torn at this moment. Interestingly, it's not until 14 seconds later that I realize that there is a break in the posterior capsule. I can see the vertical break in the posterior capsule from 12 to 6 o'clock, but now we have to prioritize and execute and remove the nucleus from the eye without letting pieces of the cataract fall into the vitreous. So I place my chopper below the nuclear fragment and in front of the posterior capsule to prevent the nuclear fragments from going south. Once I have the nucleus out, then I keep the phaco infusion on and ask for some viscoelastic to stabilize the anterior chamber and hopefully keep the vitreous from prolapsing into the anterior chamber. Now, we have several choices on how to remove the cortex. Number one, use an anterior vitrectomy instrument. Number two, use irrigation and aspiration in a low flow setting or number three which is our ultimate choice dry irrigation and aspiration where we fill the capsular bag and anterior chamber with viscoelastic to stabilize the anterior chamber then use the viscoelastic cannula and syringe to aspirate the cortex in a slow but controlled manner we make multiple paracentesis incisions to allow us to access the cortex from the most advantageous angles. We are ultimately able to remove the cortex in its entirety and polish the posterior surface of the anterior capsule. Now we have five choices on the lens implant to use and how to place it. Number one, a three-piece monofocal lens could be placed in the bag with the haptics placed at three and nine o'clock. Number two, a three-piece monofocal lens could be placed into the sulcus. Number three, a three-piece monofocal lens could be placed in an optic capture configuration where the optic is in the bag and the haptics in the sulcus. Number four, a panoptics lens can be placed into the capsular bag. Or number five, a panoptics lens can be placed in a reverse optic capture configuration where the haptics are in the bag and the optic is prolapsed anterior to the anterior capsular axis, which is about five millimeters in diameter. We choose option four, placement of the panoptics lens into the bag. We make sure that we have a generous amount of viscoelastic, in this case, OcuCoat, in the anterior chamber. Then we gently and slowly insert the IOL with the leading haptic into the capsular bag. Then we place the trailing haptic into the eye then push more viscoelastic into the anterior chamber, then gently rotate the haptics to be perpendicular to the vertical tear in the posterior capsule. Now, to remove the viscoelastic, we flush the anterior chamber with balanced salt solution and choose to not use the irrigation and aspiration handpiece, 
which would potentially cause inadvertent displacement of the panoptics lens from its position inside the capsular bag. We can see that the panoptics is perfectly centered with the haptics in an area of the capsule that is stable and intact at 3 and 9 o'clock. We have now flushed out most of the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber, so we then hydrate all of our corneal incisions. Now to make sure that there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber, we infuse myostat into the eye to induce pupil constriction. We then use our 27 gauge cannula to sweep the pupil border to search for vitreous prolapse. Fortunately, there is no vitreous prolapse in this patient. Finally, we nudge the IOL into ideal alignment and centration and inspect the corneal incisions to make sure that they are watertight. This is the view of this patient's eye one day after surgery. The IOL is perfectly centered. His uncorrected vision is 2020 far and 2020 or J1 plus near. His refraction is plano. He is very happy with his vision and wishes to schedule his second eye surgery the next week. Lessons learned? Look into the mirror, or in this case, go back and watch the video when complications occur. You can learn a lot and always stay humble. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye.